On the 9th of March, Colossal Order released this tweet. We already had rumors, leaks and ideas floating around for a potential successor to City Skylines. In this video, I want to present a wish list of features from an urban planner's point of view. Because not everyone is a hardcore city sim player, the ideas featured in this video must first and foremost be enjoyable for all players. This means that ideas shouldn't be too complicated or need excessive micromanagement, yet at the same time provide more in-depth options to those that want to dig deeper. Let me know in the comments which features you think this description fits to. Let's start with a big one. Roads. After all, traffic planning is a big part of City Skylines. Many of the traffic problems in City Skylines stem from the fact that vehicles turning left lock traffic behind them or cut people off and cause them to slow down in the opposing lane, much like in real life. This can be solved by having dedicated turn lanes on larger roads and avenues. The easiest solution for players here is to have this happen automatically. The curb on streets in City Skylines already automatically retracts when placing a bus stop. This same system could be modified to allow medians to retract and make room for left turn lanes. Multiple roads on the Steam Workshop already trigger different medians via detecting traffic lights. A similar system might work for dedicated left turns as well. Via the already existing intersection manager, the player could also manually delete this dedicated left turn lane. Right turn slip lanes can also be integrated using the already existing bus station feature and the aforementioned idea. Highway ramps connecting to a highway in city skylines are unrealistic and would be very dangerous in real life. The reason for that is that there's no acceleration or deceleration lanes. I suspect that this might also be possible with a modified version of the bus stop system, substituting space on the curb for an acceleration or deceleration lane. While the road editor added with the Green Cities patch is an amazing toolkit for asset creators, I'm of the opinion that an in-game road editor will be even more fun for players. There's two reasons for that. While the in-game editor would provide more flexibility concerning parking, lights, trees, props, lanes, etc. similar to the network skins mods for players willing to dabble in this topic, it at the same time would make it easier for casual players to play the game by reducing the amount of roads cluttering the road construction toolbar. Allowing users to save roads while in-game as presets into the toolbar would provide players with even more options. All these features alleviate traffic problems, give hardcore players more customization options, happen automatically for players not wanting to get into intersection design, and lastly, use already existing systems from City Skylines. Telecommunications and Digital Infrastructure With Verizon and Comcast having huge monopolies and hindering consumer choice, more and more US cities are turning towards municipal ISPs. Access to the internet is a very real demand in the 21st century. I propose a similar system to water pipes, whereby buildings connect to the internet either via copper cable or fiberglass cables. Access to the internet via copper cable would be required by mid-level houses and shops, and already by low-level offices. Access to fiberglass cables would be required by high-level houses, stores, and industry, whereby mid-level offices would already require access to it. Both cable types need to be connected to either an oceanic underwater internet cable, which can only be built where water reaches the map edges, similar to ship routes in the map editor, or via satellite dish, or building a data center. I'm of the opinion that the system is easy enough to understand and use, yet at the same time provides interesting and realistic ways to further increase a building's level. Furthermore, together with the death curve mechanic, it sets city skylines apart from the other city builders and the SimCity series. Service building improvements. One of the only features that SimCity 2013 does better than city skylines is upgradable buildings. Adding more garages or modern equipment to police and fire stations makes for some really fun gameplay. Or how about being able to change the building style, from European to international style or to Steam Workshop buildings? A drop down menu similar to the service vehicle selector or mod added drop downs could easily work if the building footprint stays the same. Thanks to City Skyline's flexible sub building system, asset creators might already be aware of it, this could be possible in City Skylines too. Zoning 
While density and building height in city skylines is based on a multitude of factors, such as available services, zoning type and regulations, and land value, and consequently building level, I feel that players want more options here. This can be done through new zone types or through more specializations and having different building levels within specializations. This has already been tried in recent DLCs starting with the green cities and works great. I propose the following new zone types. Medium density residential, which includes condos, apartments, row houses, etc. Medium density commercial, which is larger than corner stores but smaller than malls. Low, medium and high density office buildings. Low density industry, which has low to medium noise pollution and high density industry, which are facilities with very high noise pollution and very high pollution overall. As for specializations, I propose the following ideas for commercial, car focused. How about gas stations, fast food, repair shops, car vendors? Also, please just give us mixed use zoning. If we're talking about zone types, we also need to talk about zoning demands. Currently, office zones use the same RCI demand as industry. In City Skylines 2, I propose a new RICO system whereby commercial and industrial zoned blocks increase demand for offices. For example, in a city with 100 residential blocks, demand is 10 commercial and 10 industrial blocks. These 20 blocks in turn demand 5 blocks of offices. This new interaction increases complexity of the game while at the same time being more realistic. And what about zone depth? Many players complain about zones only being four tiles deep. Modders already found codes suggesting that Colossal Order previously attempted using eight tiles. Furthermore, the same modders made progress in coding a mod that actually increases zone depth, however halted the project due to time constraints. For City Skylines 2, I propose the following zone depth. Tiny and small roads, four tiles. Medium roads, eight tiles large roads, 16 tiles. This makes cities look way more realistic and downtown avenues will have larger buildings than suburban streets. But what if you want large mansions on small tree-lined roads or no zoning on throughfares? The road menu could have a small button similar to the upgrade tool that allows increasing zoning size. So do I even need to repeat myself? More realism, more customization, not tedious for casual players and it eases traffic management. Lively Sims As user Yuda Karina wrote, Sims shouldn't just be lifeless things moving through your city. More social issues, different needs for groups of people, more interactions with the environment will make cities feel more lived in and lively. City Skylines already has different animations for different people groups, as well as people walking their dogs, etc. But we need more. Cities aren't just the built-up environment, but a social fabric and social construct as well. Municipal Politics Let's be honest here, once you become familiar with the game and manage to gain money during the start of your city, the game becomes easy from there on. To increase complexity, to add a small amount of randomness, and lastly to achieve a form of progression, I propose a system somewhere between the advisor system of SimCity and the quest system in the Anno series. Different advisors or NPCs would provide contextual choices. These quests can also help new players get a grasp on systems. For example, sims don't like living next to large roads. And also serve as mini tutorials parallel to the already existing progression system. Secondly, advisors or NPCs can, if certain conditions are met, propose special buildings to be built, much like in the SimCity series, whereby each building has pros and cons that you have to consider. This is a much more involved and expanded system compared to the existing unique building unlocks. Lastly, in order to make it easier for casual players and to have a form of progression, some advisors, quests, policies and game functions could be logged behind certain buildings. All these features should help to make cities feel more unique and lively. Check out this video on the right on how to start your unique looking city. Check out the other recommended video to see other types of content that I create. Thanks for watching.